Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knights of the Pages Library. We are a little podcast dedicated to reviewing audiobooks. I am Bo Knight, and with me, as always, is Ryan Knight. And today, we are looking at Florida Roadkill by Tim Dorsey and narrated by George Wilson. Yeah, and this is uh, book one in the Surge Storms series of books, which is a beast of a series. This series has 24 books with one scheduled to come out next year. So, a uh, huge series. Yeah, it is definitely very long running. And we kind of messed up because we wanted to check out Oliver Wyman reading this, but we didn't realize that he didn't start, he didn't narrate the first couple books. So, oops, but that's okay. We were here anyway. Yeah, so if anybody's curious, uh, we uh, the episode we did with Oliver Wyman, he mentioned that this is one of his favorite series that he narrates. So I, not paying attention, just went straight over to Audible and I was like, cool, we'll do that series. Yeah, not knowing he doesn't come in until like the ninth book in the series. So uh, this will be a review of, like you said, George Wilson as the narrator. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, I, th- what do you think? Is this probably what Tim Dorsey is known Dude, for? <laughs> that's exactly what I was trying to think of how to put. Like, I, I'm I'm looking through his novels. I mean, it looks like most of them are part of the the Surge Storm series. That's all I'm seeing, at least on Audible. So, it says he has twenty. Oh yeah, it says he has twenty. Okay, yeah, that's titles, all I'm so. seeing too on Audible. So <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, this is kind of what he's known for, which I don't know. What kind of genre is this? I don't know. It has it listed under uh, literature and fiction and action and adventure. Um, okay. This to me, <laughs> this to me sounds like listening to someone tell you what's happening in a cartoon. Um, See that, dude. That's so funny that you say that because to me, this whole book feels like just somebody's stream of consciousness. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like I, no breaks. Them just like, sp- sp- like spewing at you for hours is what it feels like. Right. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more after the spoilers. Uh, there was some clever little like callbacks and tie-ins, which I thought were, um really good but yeah the rest of it like i said it feels like someone narrating a cartoon to me an adult like a um an adult swim cartoon (laughs) (laughs) it seems like somebody narrating like drawn together oh yeah 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 exactly a very uh yeah like r-rated cartoon Mm -hmm. um so yeah definitely um uh like trigger warning on this uh there's like a ton of drugs and sex and violence and yeah it's this book is hardcore with that stuff, but it Turtle is killing. Pres- <laughs> it's presented in a very lighthearted way, just so you know, too. They also um, chop down a very expensive tree. So. Yeah, <laughs> there's it, it's got everything, a little bit of everything. Um, and apparently that's kind of what Florida is about, uh, at least like the Miami area. Because um, this is. This is not the first time I've heard that this kind of crazy shit happens in around the Miami area. Um, so let's see. Uh, what do you think about George Wilson as the narrator of this book? I think he does okay, but to me, he doesn't do enough to differentiate the characters. I agree with you. I think that George Wilson as a narrator sounds like he is a, a good narrator. I don't know that he was good for this book. Um, for that for that reason, um, it's hard to differentiate characters, and his tone is just pretty flat for what's happening in this book of insanity. See, I didn't. I kind of appreciated that because I felt like it, it added to like the dark humor element of it. Like that okay, he's like sure. so like he's like so deadpan the whole time. Like I I kind of liked that part of it. Okay, I could see that, but I could, to me, like, 
once we once I started listening to this and getting to understand, like, okay, this is what's happening in this. It's kind of crazy. Wait, you understood stuff. what was happening? Uh, we'll get into that. Um, once I understood how crazy it was, I could see this being a great fit for Oliver Wyman I because do, of his too. range. That's the thing yeah. that was bumming me out. It's like, oh man, if Oliver Wyman was bringing this to life, I bet this story would be so good. Right, because I mean, Oliver has a huge range for his characters, whereas this guy, George Wilson, was just very monotone, and the voices sounded very, very similar, which made it kind of hard because there's a lot of characters. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think he probably is a great narrator. I just don't think this was a good book for him in my opinion yeah i agree with that entirely i don't think he's bad but just i think this book was a bad fit for him yeah um so this book clocks in right at 10 hours and 21 minutes so definitely not a short book by any means uh but i think it's right in that sweet spot like we've talked about before you know that eight to ten hour mark that uh you know most people like entry level people wouldn't see that as being too long um and you could get this for free you know as usual if you do sign up for uh audible uh or you could purchase this one for 27.99 um spoiler alert don't do that so <laughs> um Coming in hard already well i'm just that's a lot of money i think i, I mean, agree with you entirely plus i gotta do some more research but i think you can purchase the tokens through audible for like 10 bucks at a time i think so too yeah so definitely go that route like for and you most get what, books, one free a month yeah well it's not free i mean you pay your monthly fees but oh, yes you, with the subscription yeah but you you gain one a month and i mean the you know here let's go on a free audible freaking uh advertisement here it but, is kind of <laughs> getting crazy there are so <laughs> many books well and the thing is is you have so many books and you also now with the uh, with your fifteen dollars a month, and then with your um, uh, your tokens that you're earning every month, you also now have a huge array of, you know, included with your Audible subscription. That's what I think where you're really gaining here is there's so many books now that are included with that fifteen dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there was our short little Audible uh, rant. Um, Still waiting to hear back from them if we could please get a sponsorship. Um, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> yeah, paging Jeff Bezos, please. Oh, wait, he's in space. Mm. Okay, so he'll hear this and it'll, it'll take a little while for the signal to get to him, but he'll hear it eventually. Um, let's see. Okay, so we kind of talked about this a little bit. Is this uh, easy to follow? I found this book to be incomprehensible. <laughs> At best, incomprehensible at best. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I listened for about six hours and I was like, what the, what is going on? Oh, okay. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Um, like I was sitting today, like trying to like do like a rendition of the book in my head. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Like this doesn't make any sense. Like yeah. it's, 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 it was, it's so hard to follow. And I, I, I think a lot of that has to do with George Wilson's reading but, and I think a lot of that has to do with the way it's written too. Like it, like, like we've already said, it feels like just a stream of consciousness sometimes yeah. with like events that are related, but you, it's, it's hard to tell the characters apart because he's reading it in the same tone of voice for like totally different people. Right. I mean, I would say the only one whose voice stood out to me was Serge's voice. But I was getting one. him confused with Coleman like a lot. Oh, though. sure. They sound similar and mm -hmm. like they make it seem like they have really different personalities, but they didn't come across that way. No. Um, yeah, so I would agree 100% with that. This is incomprehensible at best. Um, now, that, it, that might just be a personal thing. A lot of yeah. people might think that this is this is the funniest thing they've ever listened to or you know one of the greatest things they've ever listened to uh one thing i did appreciate a lot in this is how it kind of opens up in the middle of the story and then talks and then goes back and then talks back up to that same point um and it's very bizarre because i had been thinking uh while i was listening to a monster hunter book actually that it would be interesting to hear more of what happens to side characters and 
this book smashes all of that in there. Oh, you want to hear what happens to the insurance salesman that they were just talking to? Boom, we're going to talk about it. Like it, it branches out in so many ways so that the main storyline, you know exactly what every character's involvement was in the main storyline, which I thought was very interesting. Interesting is a way to put it. But but almost to its detriment because it's it's too much stuff I think and going on at one time. I found it so hard to keep it straight. Yeah. I agree. Uh yeah, so what do you think? Easy listening? I mean, it's hard to follow, but I mean, you know, I I guess. When I when I'm confused the whole time, yeah, it goes down pretty smooth. <laughs> It's just all one big confusing mess. Yeah, I'm just like scratching my head for hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I don't think George Wilson is a, necessarily a bad narrator in this one. I just don't think that this story is a good fit for him. To me, I thought it was, he made this one kind of boring um, for the um, content that was being presented. Yeah, I agree uh okay so recommendation time what do you think on this one it's a no for me i actually i would agree this is a no for me as well um there were very few times i mean i laughed at a few parts and by laughed i mean i i blew some air out of my nose thought it was kind of funny uh but other than that i was just it was a confusing mess to me yeah i mean i agree wholeheartedly i mean i think they're there are good moments in this book. And maybe if you have above like maybe like a 60 IQ, which is like where <laughs> I'm at, you will like this book. Like maybe you'll understand it and maybe there's something for you here. But like, I don't know. I I found myself like scratching my head all the way to the end and being like, okay, but like what, what was this really about? Like I said, man, to me, it sounded like somebody narrating a cartoon. Like if I was facing away from the TV and somebody was sitting behind me watching the TV and trying to just, tell me as fast as they see things on the screen what's happening that's yeah. kind of how it sounded to me it comes across as kind of a garbled jumbled mess of things now yes they're all interconnected but in the end it didn't matter <laughs> like, yeah that, that's the thing that really got me it was like i felt like the book was just like hey, and it's over it's like what right. what right um i okay uh all right so that's that's two pretty hard no's from us on this one yeah it's a hard no um <laughs> i i would be interested to possibly pick this series up when oliver wyman starts narrating it just to see if that makes the story better I, but i mean like he any book he's a part of he probably adds like you know like two two points on like a 10 scale right just him and being a part of it and that's what I mean. And maybe it would come across more clearly if the characters were more defined and, and things were easier to listen to. Um, but yeah, definitely like for this first book, it's a hard start to a really, really long series. So I'd be curious yeah, to see how the series goes. that's what my head too. It's like, it didn't seem like there was like a sequel hook or anything. No, I didn't think so. Um, and... Uh, okay, let's pass the spoiler wall because now I have to ask you a question about this. I mean, it's two pretty solid no's from us, but we're going to do our normal thing. We'll pass the spoiler wall. We'll talk a little bit about the story. We cannot, there's no possible way we could talk about every bullet point because. Don't even ask me to because I don't remember. Like, I can't. I don't even, I don't even know what I heard. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so my question real quick, though, off the bat, did Coleman die? Yes. OK, <laughs> Why? That's, that's what I did not okay. understand at all. Those guys shoot him in the head at that hotel at the end. Yeah, I do not, that's what I mean. Like Coleman's <laughs> part of the series, right? Yes, he's part of the whole series. So I, but, but they met in this book, correct? Yes. Yeah, they meet in the like, uh, I do don't they, know, the first there, like, like necromancy or something like I or is that's, this is this like a side story and, and then like actually that's not what happened to Kerm, like coleman and Serge. i i don't know but yes because the last part you hear about uh coleman is Serge comes in and he he says he sees coleman slumped over with half of his face blown off yeah so he's dead like they don't talk to each other again for the rest of the book so 
uh yeah i don't understand how the series continues because then i had to go look at the next series or the next book in the series and it definitely says surge and coleman so that, that part left me super confused because i was like because like even that part i'm like oh they're fine they're not gonna die and then like they they like go away and they come back and coleman is dead right i i, I don't know well yeah i don't i don't know um okay so <laughs> this kind of goes along with how this book to me is a mess i mean we open up with some side characters uh and like i beat would... that guy up in the the gas station right for calling the gas station attendant the n-word yeah and then they kill him right there oh, in the they, gas they station, kill him right which i did laugh because the guy who kills him where he, he stabs him with the hot dog spits to kill him <laughs> and then he pays for the hot dogs yeah, i thought that was funny, funny but other than that, yeah, I was like, what the hell just happened? Like, and then those guys, the uh, Italian guys who kill him, they come back up at multiple parts throughout the story, which, so it's like a continuous, like, the characters are always coming in and out of focus, which could be cool. I just don't know if this was a great way to see it. Like, uh I oh. Like it's it's interesting to me that you explained it as like branches, but to me this whole thing just looked like one small bush where I could see no main branch of a story. Okay, well that's that's fair though, yeah, because it does divert and talk about other characters so often, and it's not like it's not like a Game of Thrones where it's like Brand. this chapter exactly, yeah, this yeah. Well, I've been listening from... to it, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 that's exactly what I wanted to say though. Is like this chapter is from this person's perspective. No, no, no. We're like melding consciousnesses Yay! left and right. Like one sentence will be from this guy's point of view and the next sentence is from this guy's point of view. And it's like, it, to me, it was so confusing to get like a whole picture of what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and don't get me wrong. Like there are funny parts in this. Like I like the part when Surgeon Coleman pull up and the car wreck happens and the guys start shooting and the boat had spilled beer all over and he's like beer me and yeah then the, one of them coleman runs up and grabs a beer out of the street and runs yeah. back to the car and he's like he's like no you dipshit why did you just grab me one out of the cooler like i thought that was funny but those moments in this were pretty few and far between for me um i like towards the end when they get to the uh world series and he just <laughs> He sees the scalper and he's like, there's our tickets. So he just, just runs, runs the dude over. over. <laughs> yeah, like there are funny parts. Like that's funny. But so many of the parts just were like, I mean, and most of it is just Coleman doing drugs, which, okay, is funny. But at the same time, I'm like, this guy is literally just either coked out. He's on heroin or he's drunk the entire book. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. That's his whole character arc. Yeah. And then, so the, the point, at least the point that I think is the point of this book is that, like, Coleman and Serge, which I swear to God, in the beginning of the book, it said they were cops. I swear to God. Am I crazy? I don't remember that. I, I could have sworn but it said they were cops. But doesn't mean it's not there. Okay. I, anyways, so they turn out they're not, they're definitely not cops. They are, like, criminals who are simply trying to do like small time like theft or robbery or like they trick somebody into giving them things and then they just steal it um just just that's how they live their lives i guess um and it's mostly about trying to get drugs and money the whole time uh and then they come to find out that this one guy has a five million dollar like insurance policy on his hands alone because he's a yeah he's a dentist right he's a dentist so like he insured his hands only for five million so Serge and Coleman come up with a plan they're gonna mutilate this guy's hand and then they're going to basically blackmail him into giving them a large portion of the five million dollar settlement right and they're gonna blackmail him because they know a stripper at the strip club and he like puts a fishbowl on his head and they like piss on him. Right. Or something or like shit that on it. Yeah. Something disgusting like that. And they have video of him doing that, this dentist. So they're like, he's like happily don't... married. Yeah. 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 And yeah. So they're like, we can ruin your entire, you know, dental career. If, if this video gets out there. So, 
Um, and at first they tell him they want fifty thousand dollars for it, but then they're like, "You must have been on drugs." We said we get two thirds of the money. So the whole book, part of the book at the end, is them and a few other people trying to get the five million. Well, because he stashes the five million in that guy's car, right? And the guy, yeah. like, he's like trying to figure out where the guy's going, and the guy like hates this dude, so he won't. I thought this was funny because I, I feel the conversation pain, where he like wants this dude to go away, but the guy's just like keep keeps pestering because he's trying to figure out where he's going because he stashed the money in his car because Serge and Coleman were coming to take the money from him. Right. And, and yeah, it's basically he's like, like just like tracking down the car at the end. Yeah, and I do agree. I think it's kind of funny because he's like, yeah, I think we're staying at the uh, Purple Pelican. And the guy's like, oh, I might have to get a room at the Purple Pelican. Yeah, and the yeah, first like, guy's like, he's like, I have to immediately call and cancel my reservation at the yeah. Purple Pelican. So those those little interactions are funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, the and also the insurance company, right, is trying to figure out why what's going on because they don't have enough money to pay out $5 million. Right, and right? I kind of like that little bit with the insurance salesman where we get like his background where he's never accepted a claim. And yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. he's just like a total shyster. Right. And yeah, and he's, yeah, he's essentially trying to get the money back because like they had to pay him his money, but they didn't actually have that much money on hand to pay. Yeah, because they know this case is weird because the way that they mangled the dude's hand is they cut it with a chainsaw. Like they, mm -hmm. they jack the dentist's hands up. And this insurance guy is like, you know, I've seen claims on hands before, but they might like chop the end of their pinky finger off and try to get the money. So he can always deny those. But he's like, if this is fraud, it's the best fraud I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, because they mangled his hand. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and I mean, it's some of the parts with Sharon, the freaking, uh, what's her face? It's like they're kind of funny. The cold um, Yeah, the crack whore. Yeah, the insane like psycho lady. Some of that stuff's kind of funny, but. And the funniest part to me was how they killed her by putting the freaking tire slime in her. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. That's but I found it funny that she was going to try to kill both of them and they just happened to kill her first. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I mean, like I said, there's there's some chuckles to be had here, but there's no way we could tell you the story from the start to the end without just telling you the entire book because there's no cohesive way to I have a question. It. What was like the whole trailer park retirement home thing about? I don't know because those three guys, the biker guys, yeah, they like go away on the boat. Yeah, and that's the end of that. Like that, mm -hmm. that has that's nothing I mean. to do, right, with Coleman and and Surge. I don't think so. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> I I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm trying to think if there was a a link back to like Coleman and Surge, but I. I'm having a hard time remembering if there was. I I don't know. I mean, I would say that that part was mildly funny for the sole purpose that it's probably very realistic that that oh, is shit that happens. Super <laughs> realistic. And it's it's horrendous. And it yeah, it just bums me out. Exactly. Um but no, for the life of me, I can't think of if there was a tie back to yeah, Okay, uh, cuz I that's the one thing that I'm like, okay, but why was that in there? Yeah, I'm not sure. And then, right, the the three Italians from the beginning, they try end up trying to get the money too, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other two dudes, um, I can't even think of their names, but they end up finding out about the money, and they're trying to get it back for the insurance guy, right? They get hired. They're like hitmen, essentially, aren't they? Yeah, I think so. And they're trying to get it back for the insurance guy, though, right? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Either way, pretty much everyone except Serge dies. Yeah. So right? He just drives I, away, and he doesn't she, get the money, right? I don't think so. I don't think he ever does the, get the, the money. Because the two hitmen get the money, I thought. Yeah, and don't they end up getting killed, though? Or do they get saved? I just remember them getting pushed into the water, right, and sinking in the water. They get saved by the biker dudes. On the boat? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, there's your tie-in back to the main story. <laughs> and they kill the insurance salesman guy, I think. Okay, yeah. I think you're right. To keep the money. Yeah, I think that's exactly what happens. 
Yeah, but yeah. like what the, the thing that bothers me, it's like it's like, okay, I feel like the last end of the book like shifted away from Coleman and Surge and was like more about those hitmen men. Hit hit men men? Hit dudes, yeah. Hit dudes. That's better. <laughs> I, I, cause I, I was like, oh, if you wouldn't have told me this book was about Surge and Coleman, I wouldn't have known who the main no. characters were. Exactly. If it, if this was not called the Surge Storms series, yeah, I almost everybody has a pretty equal amount of screen time in this, mm-hmm. where we get their point of view aside from Surge and Coleman. Yeah. Okay, but I'm trying to think of anything else I want to talk about. I don't know, man. And I'm just I'm scrolling through some of the audible reviews right now, and I'm surprised how many people think that the story is five stars and uh George Wilson's performance was the worst part. Like I we kind of said the same thing, but I also think that the story is not very good. So I don't know, man. Maybe we're just too dumb. I and maybe that's it. Maybe, you know. Because I, I do like the tie-ins. I like how t- stuff ties back together. Um, one of the more interesting things I liked listening to this is how many um, locations they talk about that are also referenced in the Dexter books. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did like that because obviously they're both in Miami, um, and it also is what lends to the okay. Apparently, just crazy, you know, people getting killed and drugs and stuff. That must be kind of what Miami is because. There's a lot of reference to that in a lot of things. Yeah, I guess that is true. Um, and I want to say this narrator, or the the narrator, the writer, Tim Dorsey. I want to say he grew up there. Um, I th- I started reading something about it, and I think he moved there when he was really little and lived there, uh, for a long time. Oh, he lives in Tampa, Florida currently, but so he's from that area. So I would say he probably does have some firsthand experience too. Yeah, which is, is cool. It it was weird to me that like Serge was supposed to be like he knows everything about Florida, but then he like also knew everything about like spaceships and stuff like that. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know. It had a it just had a weird vibe with a lot of that stuff, and it, and it, maybe it was the way he was narrated. It didn't come across that way that he was like supposed to be like a smooth, you know, like know it all. And maybe it was just the way he was narrated, but yeah, because like a lot of the time when he was spouting information, it just felt like random nonsense. Mm-hmm. It, it felt like it didn't even make sense in the story that he was talking about this thing. But he was—he's supposed to be like a genius too, right? Like, because I, I, I mean, guess when he rigs that thing that uh, with the shotgun that freaking shoots the guy during the shuttle launch. That's I mean, yeah, that that part's cool. It's like super clever, but at the same time, it's like, why does he know how to do this? Yeah, you know what I why mean? wouldn't they just shoot him? <laughs> right. I I don't that's, know. That's one thing I didn't understand. It's like he's not gonna give you the money. He's bound up and gagged. What is the point of this torture device? Yeah, I don't know. Um but yeah, I'm I'm I found this one hard, hard to get through, actually. Uh yeah, I started I... listening to it and then I stopped. And then I had to come back to it because we picked it for the podcast. So, yeah, I've, I've been listening to this in like Game of Thrones and it, uh, whatever, like it was always like, mm, I just want to listen to Game of Thrones, though. <laughs> it was so right. hard to listen to this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I've been going through the Monster Hunter series. So to come to listen, hey, you got to this, catch up, dude. I already listened to those. I know. I know. I, don't, I haven't had nearly as much time as you. <laughs> um, still at work. So. Yeah, you got anything else for this one? Uh, no. Two thumbs down. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, but you know it happens. We listen to it, so you guys don't have to. Uh, so what are we doing next time, Bo? We're doing Dune, the abridged version, because that's all there is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and I want to say it's the only like english version on audible Mm -hmm. there are some in other languages but i think this one that is abridged is the only english version so that'll be the one we do uh let me see if i can find it real quick doesn't look like i have it downloaded yet Uh, i was just going to read off the narrator okay so it's dune by frank herbert you know i'm sure everybody knows that 
And then I think it's narrated by more than one person, if I remember. Interesting. Yeah, so it says it's uh, Scott Brick. And Ooh, then Scott Brick's good. Five or six other people. Yeah, I find Scott Brick's name coming up a lot on the uh, audiobooks subreddit that people really, really enjoy his narrating. Um, and we have definitely listened to a number of books that he has narrated because mm -hmm. he has a vast amount of books that he's narrated. Yeah, he's so, prolific. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so if anybody has anything to say about any of this, please feel free to email us, kotpl.pod at gmail.com is the easiest way to get a hold of us. Um, yeah, go head on over to YouTube and leave comments if that's your thing, you know, if that's the easiest way to do it. Just find this episode and leave a comment. We appreciate all that too. Um, and yeah, I think with that, we will uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.